Oh, thank you. Hey everyone, before we get this episode started, also, <laughs> I wanted to sound like a YouTuber, that's why I started off with, hey everyone, like, subscribe below, you know how YouTubers are. Okay, but before we get started, I want you to know we are going extra big with the all-star season of Vulnerability Time podcast, so guess what? We got video podcast, so click in the episode description below if you wish to watch the video of the podcast as well. It'll be a YouTube link, so you can go ahead and get it going and get watching it. Make sure to follow, like, subscribe below. <laughs> Such a YouTuber, right? Anyways, folks, enjoy the episode. All right, welcome back to part two, folks. No intro needed, because this is literally a continuation from part one or something like that. Dylan, Dylan, hey Dylan. Okay, so Dylan, I was asking you like right before we just started this, and I kind of like was like, let's stop mid-answer, because um, I want to hear it and I want the people to hear it. Um, okay, so I asked you, because from, from, from what I've seen, um, based off like you know things that you post and like you know how you speak about just you know uh, things you seem to be a lot more spiritually enlightened attuned aware um than a lot of people that i come across and that's not saying that that's not a bad thing it's just that you know it's definitely an observation you know i think that that is something extremely cool so i asked you i was like you know what was the cause of that was it because you had like a near-death experience because I do watch a lot of near-death experience videos and um, people that um, do get to come back um, they have a different type of spiritual kind of awakening um, myself included fun fact okay. go for it oh well um no that's well so I Kind of like what we were talking for, about to talk about and everything before. I was like, there have been, I mean, there have been a lot of like pivotal and significant experiences that have happened in my life. I don't really know like what it means to be, I guess, like enlightened or just like, I guess, in that realm. But there have just been a lot of really, probably like, I'd say like painful experiences that I've mm-hmm. gone through. I wouldn't say they were near death experiences or anything like that, but. I'd say that there were there were parts there were experiences that really kind of shifted my perspective and shifted kind of the way that I moved through life and everything like that and um, there was definitely a lot of experiences I'd say that were that caused me to really reevaluate how this world works and everything and. I mean, I'd say like it really, it really started when I was like little, like I'd say like right out the womb, basically when probably like five, six years old, I had a pretty traumatic experience, like a lot of traumatic experiences and everything like that. Just dealing with um, racism, dealing with like physical abuse, dealing with psychological abuse, dealing with um, the suppression, suppression of my voice. I mean, tied in with being so young, having to deal with such intense like hatred and negativity in the environment, not really at, um, you know, not really having any control over those like situations and everything like that. Because obviously, you know, you're, when you're a little, like when you're a kid, like little kid, you can't really, there's not really much you can do in the sense of like taking yourself out of environment, especially when you're being prepared for. So, um, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of like of that and everything like that when I was like five, six years old. And then I'd say like, around that time a couple years after after being put up for adoption i mean this was a very like there was a lot going on like right away and everything like that and then again it's ex- being exposed to the whole racism stuff and just that at a young age kind of like really opened up my eyes towards just kind of just people in general and everything like that and just like understanding different walks of life and understanding like what it feels like to be on the other side of those, you know, other side of that and everything like that. And 
really just being like, okay, I don't know why this is happening to me or like what's happening or like the reason why and everything like that. And then, I mean, there, there've been a lot of different things, but it hasn't just been one thing, but it's, it all ebbs and flows kind of like what we talked about before. So there was like weeks of, you know, amazing, I guess, experiences. I wouldn't say they were good or bad, but just experiences that were a little bit like of higher quality and like higher vibration, I guess, than yeah. you know, those ones and everything like that. And yeah. so, mm, yeah, trauma can teach us a lot, can it? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I feel like going on a run. It's hard no, to really yeah. point, you know what I mean? Because it's like hard to pinpoint like exactly okay yeah, it's what complex. what experiences right so but yeah so that was, oh, yeah, that was no, I'm, I'm just here listening you're doing good this this, <laughs> this vulnerability Wait. time we ramble we ramble especially me oh. all the time I ramble all the time. <laughs> oh okay hmm. yeah. um there's another thing I'm gonna ask but I don't know if it's too personal no you can no ask it ask what. Have you experienced sexual abuse? Not sexual abuse. Okay. More, more I'd say it was the, the physical abuse for sure. I mean, again, like, it's like being when I was like five, six years old. Again, like um, it was. I mean, essentially, it was. It was coming from the fact because I'm mixed. Because my dad, not because of that, but my dad being black, my mom being white, and everything like that. Um, not saying that's why I was physically abused, but. The man who was in the house at the time, who was physically abusing me, um, he, you know, didn't like this and everything like that. Like, you know, he didn't like that. I had stepbrothers who were all like full-fledged, uh, you know, Caucasian, they were full-fledged white. And uh, from what I was told and everything like that, I was the one that was like picked out of the bunch, like most of the time and everything like that. And so. This guy, I mean, he ended up going, he ended up going to prison. He ended up going to jail and everything eventually, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but I really think that shaped my experiences. I think that was like the start of the things that were necessary to carry me to where I'm at and where I'm going and everything like that. I mean, so a lot of people believe in like soul contracts. So a lot of people think, you know, that you sign, you sign up for this and everything prior to coming into this this body i don't again like we don't know for sure but i do think there's a reason why that certain people have to go through certain things and those things aren't the most pleasant experiences but they're necessary for whatever uh part you're playing in this journey and everything like that yeah you were just speaking (laughs) facts okay so i've been watching tons of near-death experience videos Um, yeah well yeah please Hmm. Like yours and everything like that, right? Sorry, go ahead. My bad. Oh no, you're fine. I just couldn't. I just couldn't um, uh, hear you. Um, yeah, because in this very room that I'm recording in was when I committed suicide when I was 15. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's, so, that's out of here. And so ever since then, I um. I, I, I think differently than a lot of people. I know certain things. I see certain things. Mm-hmm. And by see certain things, I'm not saying like, oh, I, like, I see like angels and demons. I don't see those anymore. Um, but when I did see it, it was like mostly demons. But um, thankfully, I don't see that. Because um, I know people say, oh, that's schizophrenia. I mean, that's not necessarily how that works. Right, um, definitely. You different. know, and I'm just like, you know, there, there are, you know, like there's other realms, you know, there's a whole spiritual side of many, many, many things. Um, but um, I would say this, I would say the soul contract, I like the word that you said, the soul contract, um, basically that whole theme of, you know, we get to choose a lot of our experiences, not just for our own benefits, but for the benefits of others to help teach them, to help learn, to help experience things that only a human being can experience. Um, I would say this, what my experience taught me is that does seem to be very accurate. 
I'm just, from my experience, that's what I'm saying. From my experience and the reason why, like, all these other near-death experience videos, you know, um, all from biased and unbiased sources. We got atheists, we got um, Buddhists, we got um, uh, freaking preachers' daughters and pastors, Christians, you know, like, everyone, they don't even know each other. These people don't know each other. And they're just on YouTube sharing their story. And the fact that it's just like, and I've seen way too many, way too many of those videos. Um, I'm just like, one, I am more apt to believe um, what a lot of people are saying over than others because I'm like, I experienced something so similar. Obviously, they got longer experiences than I did. But I'm like, interesting. That makes a lot of sense. But, um, you know, I, I, and I did get to meet that the Jesus guy. You know, he's not the Jesus that I was taught about in church. He's not that, you know, religion type of guy. You know, um, it seems that, it seems... this I'll, you, oh this is what I'll say how about this um based off my experience and these other people's near-death experiences um it seems like when it seems like that Jesus was an extended master an extended master mm -hmm. to defeat death it seems like it is finished means it is finished for every single person it does not matter um doesn't matter if you like him or not, you know, it seems like it is finished for everyone in that um, there's no more death for anyone. Um, that's what it, from my experience in these near death experience videos, but I'm yeah. just gonna, you know, oh, um, cool. so that's what I'm saying for, for my experience mostly as well. And the other thing is that um, it, it does appear. And it does seem as though um, we did get to choose a lot of things, not just for um, our own spiritual learning advancement, but others as well. It seems like, especially it seems like um, parental guardians are definitely a more specifically based thing. Um, that, that definitely is a huge aspect of it. So, I'm not saying oh, any of this is like hardcore, the yes, but I'm just saying um, a lot of what you just said there, I can attest and I know what I experienced and I was never that type of person to even think that Jesus was real or to think that higher power or higher powers were real. Um, I was a skeptical, hardcore, hardcore, hardcore atheist. Experience when I killed myself, and so um, it just opened my eyes to a lot. And um, I, it just, it does, Dylan. Between me and you, it seems like first off, God is huge, like yeah. huge. Like you know, who were we to like put them in a box of oh, it's just the Bible. It seems like there's there's tons of truth that has just yeah. been spread it out and put into other belief systems and religion as a way of to help separate human beings um but we all it, it, it appears as though um we all knew that there would be chaos it's apparently it appears as though earth is the quickest way to learn things yeah i think Ken does that make sense no, it does. I and mean, there's a lady, I think Canon Dolores talks about that a lot too. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. heard of her, but yeah, she, she's a big like advocate about like, about that and everything. But, uh, there's something else I was going to say about that, but it slipped my mind. So. Oh, if, if it comes back up, I mean, literally just interrupt me. I'm serious. Just literally interrupt me. Okay. <laughs> I, cause I know we're going to dove into past traumas a little bit if you're still comfortable with that you know i respect boundaries um yeah. you know i there are some parts about my near-death experience that i shut out from telling people 
because I didn't want them to invalidate it. I told them most of the things, but I didn't tell them that it doesn't, I don't think hell is for, it exists for humans anymore. You know, and I was like, that's just me. That's just from my experience. Like, it just does not seem, it just does not. But um, seeing these videos, it just gave me confidence. I was like, oh my God, like they're saying these same things, you know? Um, and it made, and I'm so glad that like my higher powers, powers, I'm talking Holy Spirit, Jesus, God, um, the vibrations of the universe, um, my spirit guides, they're all fired, by the way. <laughs> it's just, like, <laughs> you're all fired, by the yeah. way. But I thank them for hearing my, like, cries. Because uh, I was just so mad at God. I was very indifferent about Jesus. Yeah. Um, for a long time now, I've always been mad at God. Because I was just like, I just don't understand. Like, it seemed that, it seemed as though my childhood was so strategically, consistently supposed to be fucked up. You know, and I'm like, of course I would be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Way too many times, you know what I mean? And it's like, I only remember two good things happening in my childhood. Literally. I mean, literally. You know, um, so, it, seeing these videos and, it, it assuring my experience because how I learn and how I do research, I don't do it biasly. I, I, I think that if you're confirming something from a biased source, you're gonna get it because <laughs> right. it's biased. You know what I mean? I was like, that's not really because knowledge comes with challenge. So it's just like if something is like true, then bias and non bias is gonna show that. But um, for me, I like to do non-biased research and biased research. So that's why I love these near-death experience videos because we're in the same things from people who identify as Buddhists on this earth, people who identify as Christian, the Southern Baptist Christian as well, you know. Um, like they're connected. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, so it, it just took all of the weight, like, all the anger off my shoulders towards God because I was just like you motherfucker I was like who, 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 who this childhood bitch you can have it I was just like you can have it so yeah. it, it, it makes a lot of sense because it, it literally it just looks so consistent you know and it makes so much sense and I was like okay I chose it to learn I chose these parents to teach them things. Um, now, whether they chose to learn it, because we still have free will, you know, I don't know. But, right. um, <laughs> yeah, so that, yeah. that's what I'm saying, folks. I'm not trying to, you know, sound all old, like, conspiracy. No, I'm just saying my experience, and I'm just saying others' experience. Folks, find out for yourself. It doesn't matter. We're still on this earth. Um, learning, living, and um, before and after this, we're gonna see that we were supposed to forget a lot of things in order to truly learn on this earth because you can't really um, learn something without challenge. And so that's why we're not meant to know our plan before coming here. Um, and I, last thing, Dylan, I would say when I killed myself at 15, and when Jesus hugged me, because I was crying my eyes out, mm -hmm. um, I felt like I was home. I felt like I'd been there before. It, it's like I was home. Like it was familiar. I, it's, you know, and and when I heard so many people say that in the near like experience videos, my mouth just dropped because I'm like. You know, um, mm -hmm. I, and I think that's going to be very similar for many people, for a lot of us, for all of us, is that, you know, we're going to, whenever it's our time, we're going to realize, oh, I've been here before, and then, yeah, so, it's 
it's yeah. experience. No, that's amazing. I honestly, that's, that's incredible. We had quite the experience, honestly, like a very eye-opening experience for sure. I'm sure it's like how it, maybe it's why you're doing what you're doing and connecting with so many people and everything like that. I don't you know, who knows, but yeah, death. I mean, I don't think it has to be a scary thing either. Like, I don't really think right. it's a, a terrifying thing. And I know it's something that, I mean, maybe I'll experience at some point in my life too, where I'm like, freak out because I'm like, oh crap, you know, it's, it could be around. Okay, well, be, be careful what you, literally what you ask for. So you're, no, seriously, because it seems like people get these experiences based off something traumatic going on. Now, like, being dead and death are two different things. Death is no more. I know us humans, we still call dead and death. But um, but you know what it taught me? It taught me that being dead is only hard for the living. It's only hard for the living. It's only hard for us that are still here. Um, because it's just like, once we're like, after this, we are not complaining. <laughs> we're, we are not complaining. We are just living our best life, literally. But, um, yeah, um, I, I would say, you know, definitely think about if you really do want to experience that because it, it does seem like, you know, it, it's, it, it happens because of a traumatic experience, like a car accident or a suicide attempt or, you know, I would love to meet people who just, it happened in a dream or they just went in their sleep and then got to come back. Um, so I, I'm just... I, I just, I, I like to say that because though the experience was extremely beautiful, Dylan, extremely beautiful, what it took to get to that point, horrible. Absolutely horrible. Just horrible. Uh, but then once I actually died, I was like, oh my God, this is freaking amazing. But it's just like getting to that point while you're still alive on earth, you know, Suicide is not always a happy thing. You know, people are like... Absolutely, I mean, no, absolutely not. Yeah, you know, I'm not happy. saying you said that. I'm not saying you yeah. said that. I'm just saying, like, just I'm trying to get more, like, it's, um, trying to prove my point more and behold. Um, it, it seems to be a traumatic thing. That's yeah, for most people, suicide is not exactly, like... I'm sure it's probably not a roller coaster for most people. No, just NDEs in general. Just NDEs in general. Like all these videos that I'm seeing, it's just like, oh, they were in a car accident or they yeah. had a severe illness and that's how they got their experience. Because I truly think if we truly, 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 truly do want it, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's like, it, it, yeah. Do, will I say it's worth it? Yeah. Is it worth all that trauma? Yeah, but like, you know. Yeah, I mean. I can live without. <laughs> I can live without. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. I was like, I, I'm. It's. It's definitely not something that. I, I feel like it's something that you should be seeking out. Obviously, I don't think suicide is ever something, especially if you're trying to like learn from it and everything like that. I don't. There's plenty of other ways to, to gain life experience out outside of like attempting like suicide is something a serious suicide because it it does become it affects everyone around you and everything like that so it's not something that is exactly ideal to learn and everything like that but like it is something that if you're going through it it's hard to explain it to someone who hasn't gone through serious sadness or serious depression because um especially i mean everyone has moments of sadness and everything like that or serious feelings of sadness or anything like that but for someone who does have depression or has what people quote as mental illness and everything like that is uh something that can't really be uh fully explained and everything and so when you do go through a suicidal experience or anything like that or like when you are having suicidal thoughts it becomes very overwhelming and it's again it's like you and when someone's like oh you're so selfish and everything like that like how could you do that it's like well you don't know what I'm experiencing. You don't know the pain. You don't know the severity of how intense this like inner pain is. But maybe you do, and everything like that. Like maybe you do. But again, it's like to say that to a person who is experiencing uh, serious modes of sadness and depression. It's it's like it's it's 
they might not fully understand it. Even though they think they might do, they don't fully, they might not fully understand it and everything like that. So, yeah, like, I've had my, yeah, I've had my own bouts of serious depression and everything like that. And it's like fire, you know, it feels like fire. It feels like yeah. your whole inner world is just on fire and you just fall into it and you tear yourself apart. You know, like you tear yourself apart and everything is just like, it's intense and everything like that. But I feel like if you can get through it, it does. I feel like that's what's contri- also contributed. You asked me going back to your first question. I think that's what's contributed to my ability to be resilient and to kind of share these experiences with clients, with friends, with family, and come off sometimes like I've had people tell me that I seem like more mature or like more emotionally mature or like wise and everything like that but i i don't like ever identify is that this is just things that people have told me but i think the experiences i've gone through have helped kind of uh helped kind of create that in other people's eyes but not necessarily my own oh yeah yes the trauma comes with pros and cons one of the pros is that that thing can grow you up that thing can teach you things that you seem very, that's what I'm saying, like, honestly, Dylan, I don't even think you need an NDE anyways, like, you already seem, like, good to go, like, you seem like... Wait, I don't need a what? <laughs> you What'd you say? You like seem, good to go, like, you seem, oh. like, set in, um, you, you know, you see the spiritual, like, awareness and awakeness. Seems yeah. like you have a. I mean, I don't know you know you honestly, yeah. but just from what I've seen, it seems like um, you got a lot of the exact same qualities. Obviously, in a different way, but you got a lot yeah. of the exact same qualities of people who have, you know, died and came back to Earth. I was gonna say you, you obviously you as well in advance. Yeah, because I actually did die and came back to Earth, but you, <laughs> but you, cool. you didn't have uh, yeah. to go through that. Go you, seriously, go you. No, yeah, I mean, well, like, and, and it's not to say that the experiences I went through weren't like, I, again, I'm not, I, I don't think I've had a near death experience, but it's not to say that they weren't as they could have been just as intense, but I can't, I don't, I won't know because I haven't really remembered or I don't think I've ever really had one or anything like that. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and to, to, to validate your point as well, it's like, you know, someone can have the exact same intensity and still not put an action behind it. Yeah. So just to, I don't, I don't want, and forgive me if I made it seem like, um, it was like a scale, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, I didn't. Oh, uh, no. no, you're good. I'm just, no, I'm just listening. Oh. Yeah. I didn't take any, it's like, no offense, I'm just bouncing off what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, you know, and I don't know, I'm being vulnerable. This is vulnerability really time. Sorry, yeah. Dylan, I'm about to drop a heavy bomb. I don't know, it might make you look at me different. But the po- this is what your podcast is. It's cool. <laughs> so yeah, I had to call it. my support group yesterday, which is um, I have five people in my support group. All of my best friends, they're all my best friends. Um, I had to call two of them because I was about to, I was about to do another attempt. Um, the same way when I was 15. And I started to, you know, realize that, you know, watching all of those near death experience videos, um, I watched too much of them to where, you know, it made me. Maybe, because it's not like I haven't already experienced it. So it's just like, I know that for me at least, for me, I feel like me being on Earth, I'm missing out by being on Earth. Um, and that, that's just me, that's just me, you know. Um, like how, how people love life, you know. Um, Time is precious. You never know when your time is up, or um, you only get one life. I, I just I don't see things like that. I don't see time and life like that anymore. I just don't. So me, I'm just like I don't give. 
creep about time. I'm like, I, it's, this isn't even real time anyway. It really isn't. Like, it really isn't. Eternity um, feels long. For example, like six minutes here on Earth um, can feel like two hours in eternity. So it, it, it is, it is, it is, time is definitely different. I don't even think it's the word time, but that's the best that us humans can grasp. Um, yep. Events and stuff is time and hours and all that good stuff. But yeah, no, like I, I was telling them, I was like, guys, like I can, like I've done all this healing. I've done all this growth and I don't, People are so surprised when I tell them I had a awful childhood um, because I don't act like how what I you know been through. You know, um, people see the the healing has brought so much of the just blessings. You know what I mean? Obviously, it still comes with the burdens, um, and those burdens are I suffer from depression, but like. People won't know unless, like, I actually just say something. Um, and it's not like I hide it. I'm just genuinely just this. Like, I, like, smile a lot and shit like that. Um, but it's like I, I do suffer from depression. And that's why I know I, I, I act so happy. Because in a way, I, I, I am. Um, I think a, a lot of people just make me happy. You know, just human beings, um, I don't see all human beings like this anymore, but human beings, I just think they're just full of such unique experiences, and I think it's so cool, and I just would love to just learn this human being, like, what can I learn from them, you know, like, look at the, the gifts that they have, you know, um, I want to be able to, you know, um, just be another human being, just we're all on this journey together. We're in the same route, different boats, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just so, I just, I don't know. I think humans are one of our greatest, um, can be one of our like greatest um, learning um, tools. Um, things that, you know, calculators and textbooks can't teach us. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, all of our, all of our experience, we're really just helping one another. We're just sharing, are sharing our own experiences with one another to yeah. I mean, ultimately, I mean, maybe not everyone's intention, but to create a more unified experience. Well, some people don't think that we're here to like help each other. Some people, yeah, yeah. Are, like, I don't know, I guess it's like, yeah, look at the politicians, all of them, every single one of them, just like every single one of them, everyone's all for themselves. I don't know. There's one. Well, there's this one quote that I remember, like that, uh, like will always sit with me. And it's it's uh, we don't have to think alike to love alike, and I think that's like mm. a big like we don't have to think like one of my yeah, like one of my really good friends. He's like I, he just has a very like he's very strong, like strongly opinionated and everything. I'm not gonna say any name, but he just has a very strong opinion about things. And there's certain things I just I'm just like that's. I don't, you know, I don't think the same way and I just like, disagree, but he's, you know, he's someone who I care deeply about. And I think that, you know, I would, I would do a lot for him and it doesn't, it doesn't matter how he thinks at the end of the day, cause we're both human beings. Yes. Ultimately. So it doesn't ma even matter really, yes. but there's like so much divide in the world and everything like that, but yeah. Mm. So that was my whole thing. Uh, yesterday, I was just like, Yeah, sorry you went through that, man, and everything. I like, I didn't realize it was that close <laughs> to this, and everything you needed to reschedule, or, like, find a new time, you know, kind of. So, it's fine. I, um, how are you, how are you doing? I didn't now? actually attempt, I was very, very, very close. I had all the pills laid out, and then I called my support group. Um, so. If I did attempt, it would be my third attempt since I was 15. Um, well, I guess it'd be the second because when I was 15, it was actually it, it actually went through. Mm -hmm. But it, it, there's a lot of things that 
mind just soul craves, and it makes sense because it was mine. It was all of ours to begin with. You know, that whole aspect of love, like before yep. and after this, you know, and um, even during, but not as great as it is. Apparently, love is supposed to be suppressed on here, and we're supposed to, like, try to fight and learn from it. It's weird, but, um, why I chose to come to Earth, I regret. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, I had way too much privilege while I was in perfection. Because it's like you know stuff's gonna be bad, but you don't necessarily feel it because it's literally so loving and just amazing. Like, I, I know a lot of humans can't say this, but for me, I literally can physically feel the weight of a human flesh. Because I know what it's like to be out of this vessel. Mm -hmm. So it's like when something's your normal, you don't really know that you're in a bubble until it's popped. You know, a lot yeah. of humans, they're in that bubble. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying, you know, like they haven't like left their body, you know, and came back yet. But, you know, a lot of people who describe, you know, them coming out of their body or them dying, um, they talk about the light. It's just so weightless and it's just so free. And so there was just all of those things. The near death experience video was like, it, it did serve its purpose with me getting like, you know, assured and getting, getting my confidence back and my power back in what I've been through, you know, of what my near death experience looked like. Um, too much of anything can be bad and too much of yeah. anything definitely contributed to yesterday i was like or was it two days ago i don't fucking know time is all over the place i was like y'all i will know what it feels like to be in a loving family yeah I mean, like i'm just like i will know this i will know all these things that i'm hurt i will know all this goodness that I give to others, like, I will know that once again, um, and even better, you know, I think about my father, and I think about my mother, and I'm just like, I will know what it's like to have loving parents when I leave, you know what I mean, so that's what I was, and I was telling them that, and I was like, y'all, like, I just want to You know, and, and I wasn't saying that necessarily as a like, oh, I'm like, um, oh, pity me. No, I was just being genuinely honest. I'm just like, you know, I, I would stay here if I, I need to see more of a purpose. Because right now it just seems like everything is like stopped. It seems like I've done enough. I wrote a book. I've done guest speaking. I've made changes within police departments when it comes to mental health. Um... I got this podcast that's like top 14% in the world. So I was like talking to my higher powers and I was like, what more is there left for me to do? I'm just like, if I leave, y'all have my voice. It, it, so I'm like, if I am supposed to be here to teach people as well, as well as learn, I'm like, okay, well, you can have my voice. That's all I need, right? So that was kind of like my thought process behind it, you know? And even on my best days, I still think that, honestly. That's that's also the thing. That's because, like, I've, I've experienced before. I've already experienced it. So it's just, like... Right, but, like, you're also forcing... It sounds like you're forcing your departure before you're even ready. Of course! 1,000%. Yeah. Of course. And, but, like, that's not... You know, I'm not saying, like, maybe that is right for you, but also at the same time, it's like... You're... If you let things just happen, then... Your departure will your departure will happen when it's supposed to happen and everything like that. Right. So things to be done. Otherwise you wouldn't I don't think you'd even have any like control over your passing and everything like that, if that makes sense, you know. That is not, very true, actually. That is extremely so true. If you did everything you were supposed to do and everything like that, and and I'm just basing off of your opinions and if that is the the end like the end outcome then you i'd imagine that it would just 
happen. I don't think you would have to do anything. I feel like, like that's something that I like. I don't want to talk about like the way that you would go and everything like that because like, no one knows. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like it's one of those things that would just happen on its own yeah. without you having to do anything. You know, do anything with that's. But there's better. You know, there's ways to get through it and everything like that. That you don't have to. Do that to yourself and everything like that. I know you have a support group and everything, but yes. talk to me. You can always message me. I'm, I'm pretty open and I'm a pretty open person and everything like that. So my best friend would love you because he, he he said the exact same thing that he said to me, yeah. and I was just like, yes, hold me accountable. <laughs> well, <laughs> we all go through pain. It's it's necessary for our growth and everything, but it's not always easy, and it's good. It's why we have. So again, it goes back to what I was saying. Like we, we're here to help each other, and need support, and everything like that. Despite when you feel like you want to be alone, it's not always great to be alone, and that's a, it's critical for me to say that sometimes because like I go in and out of phases of like I love my solitude. Like I lo- like I'm in a phase where like I love my solitude, but I know deep down that it, like I need people, I need support, and I I need to have people to rely on and everything like that because I've gone through. The whole- staying away from people and isolating myself and everything like that and it did not work very well right. for me so, you know but right. you can do it you can do it i'm not saying you can't do it right. to be able to, but yeah. it's just life's that's that's more of like the love that you're talking about learning in these experiences you can how you that's another way to learn and everything like that is being around other people and like what we're doing now like you couldn't really do this without other people right exactly yeah. we need each other thank you yeah. we need each other yeah, I do want to mention though, uh, two days ago, uh, this type specifically wasn't a pain rooted one. Mm-hmm. The suicide uh, one, it wasn't a pain rooted. In fact, I was very at peace. Fun fact, I know that's weird, right? Yeah. You know, that's weird. I was, I was just very at peace. And it was just, um, it was very at peace. I mean, there's a lot more to it, but the whole story is basically what you just said you were very correct you know what i mean that um if, it, if something is going to happen it's literally going to happen that's literally how it is literally if someone goes before their time um they will get sent back like i did <laughs> they'll get sent back so yeah you know um so yeah they will get sent back just like I did when I was 15. So it's just like, um, I, okay, if I'm, if I'm being really honest and vulnerable, which I have been struggling to do this season. I don't know what the fuck, why. You were just open, you were just very open just now. What do you mean? Yeah, but I, 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 I noticed that I have selective vulnerability. Like with people, with certain people? Just um topics. Oh. Like, um, like I can talk about like physical abuse like no. I, I can talk about sexual abuse like no other. Like I can talk about that so like no other. But when it comes to my physical abuse, I can talk about it, but I have so much hesitation. You know, I, and it's like selective vulnerability. Be like, you can talk about this, but you can't talk about that. And I was like, yeah, I know this one seems more massive. You know, but I, it's easy for me to talk about this as opposed to something that doesn't seem as, you know, massive. Right. You know, if that makes sense. Like, I can talk about a 10, but if I try to talk about a 3, I like, hesitate. And I'll skip parts. I'll give you the overall, but I'm not being as vulnerable as if I was talking about a 10. So. That makes, yeah. No, I get, I get that. I can definitely relate to that. Because it's like what we talked about earlier, like I can talk about my trauma and I can talk about the, you know, the being physically beaten and that type of stuff. But yeah, I mean, there's like smaller things that have happened in my life, even the depression and like this, the suicidal thoughts and stuff like that, that I was experiencing. I mean, that it's like also too, like you talk about it enough times and it almost becomes like it doesn't. Like it doesn't matter. It, like it matters, but I'm saying like it, it. It's one of those things where it's like it doesn't. Uh, it's easy to talk about because you talked about it so many times. That's what I mean by it doesn't matter. It's like you can talk about it enough times where it's like it's it's flows smoothly. So those little things that 
maybe aren't as big comparatively to the bigger experiences. Maybe you just haven't talked about them enough and everything like that. Like, I mean, the whole, you know, for like my whole experience when I was like having suicidal thoughts and stuff like that, um, I mean, I was hospitalized, everything for like a week and everything like that. I went through that experience and it, I mean, it shaped my, it definitely shaped my, uh, my perspective towards like talking about certain things like if i wait wait so you you had an attempt and went to the hospital i had suicidal thoughts and got hospitalized for it oh like psych ward yeah like one of those places where like they didn't like straight jacket me yeah yeah that when i was like 19 years old and that's what this is and everything like that was like kind of a reminder but not towards the negative it was to communicate Mm -hmm. things that you're experiencing in this specific Tattoo is actually, um, it's, it's energy is located at the base of the throat and it's uh, the Shuddha yes. chakra. And so, um, but the reason it, the symbolism behind it is the fact that it deals with communication and to speak your truth and to hear your truth. And right now that's what we're doing and everything like that. Like you're speaking your truth. I'm speaking my truth and like we're listening to each other. And it's whenever you're dealing with sort of pain or experience, you should always talk about it. Whether, even if it's like minute and everything like that, I know some right. people are like, all like let it go and everything but if it's bothering you and it feels like talk about it you know like let it out and everything and that that was my thing was like you know at the time was like i needed to talk about these things i was bottling it all up and now i you know i'm more open about talking about it so yeah (laughs) yeah i um i'm proud of you for going to a facility to help with that i went to a facility to help with that too like you said mine wasn't the straight jacket one either yeah, that's but why just, when I hear psych word, I'm like, I feel like yeah. it, it's like, that's what I think of when I think of psych word. It was like a, a sub below psych word, I guess. But maybe yeah. it's. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm proud of you for going. I, um, thanks for sharing that, Dylan. Sure. Thanks for sharing your recent experience, too. Seriously. Mm. My, um, <clears throat> I mean, to take away from that. Way. I'm battling through. Obviously, I'm gonna put a trigger warning in the description below for this video. Um, but um, I, I was like, I need to get my higher powers' attention. I was like, it seems like I have to like go above and beyond and say, listen, like I'm a human being. I, I I need help. I probably bit off more than I can chew before this. I get it, but bitch. I am a human being, <laughs> y'all are not, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Y'all aren't human beings on this earth, so like, I need y'all to know, like, this shit hurts. Like, y'all know it hurts, but y'all don't know it hurts, you know? So I was just like, though you are all fired, you're all fired, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was just telling her, I was like, well, you're all fired. Somebody, somebody allowed me to out more than I can chew during that whole life process blueprint soul contract thing. Yeah. I was like, somebody allowed me to buy out more than I can chew, you know, damn well that I didn't know. So I was like, you, you are hired. Um, but <laughs> it's just like, I, I, I need y'all support because there is something that I am missing that I need that this world can't really give. It can give, but it's very rare. So I'm just like, I, I need it. Okay, like I, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm doing all of this healing, all this work. Like the things that I've accomplished, it's de- it defies statistics, you know. Um, and I'm just like, for what? You know, like for what? I was like, all to end up here. Like I, I definitely got in that. So it wasn't more so, mine wasn't coming from a pain center. Obviously pain was involved, but the root this time was, um, it was more of a peace. Um, and it was more of a, I don't know what the, what my purpose is going forward anymore. I just don't know anymore. I used to know, but I think that purposes can change. Um, once you accomplish, you can go on to the next. I feel like I... 
to what is that next, you know? Um, yeah. I don't like to be stagnant in life. I always like to be growing, to be healing, to be going forward, to be accomplishing just different things. So when I feel stuck, that's not a good thing, especially when I've already left this earth before. I'm just like, I will not hesitate to go home. Um, but it's, and I also just want to be in like the arms of like my higher powers. Yeah. Uh, God is entity. Jesus is kind of like that physical embodiment. Some people see Mary, some people see a uh, Buddha type being, you know, it's whatever um, helps them connect to their spirit while they're on this earth. That's what people can also experience. Because eternity is massive. There's so many aspects and complex aspects of eternity. And I, I feel like when someone actually has that encounter, then they can understand and grasp what I just said. Um, but it's hard to describe. But the thing is, like, I want to be in those loving arms. Well, okay. So, like, to that, I mean, maybe, like, you haven't um, gone through the full involution to experience the evolution that you need to arrive at that point to be within those arms and everything that you're kind of like trying to reach and everything like that maybe you're still there's still things that you need to do otherwise like you probably wouldn't still be here but again i don't you know like we don't we don't know for sure but yeah i, I don't know what eternity i guess i you're I, you're preaching hey it, listen i don't know what eternity is really or maybe i have part, an aspect of myself does know what it is and i just haven't really reached the grasp the full understanding of it yet i'm still getting there for everything because yeah because your, your soul already knows. Because, I mean, you came from somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. yeah <laughs> your soul already knows. That's like a lot of cravings that we get because it was ours to begin with. It was ours to begin with. Like, for example, like, people love love. People go on reality shows for love. Obviously, some people are just, you know, like, faking it on the shows. But not everybody. Some people are genuinely looking for love. People, I still you know, love. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like lust, though. Like on those shows, it's more of like lust than like. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm talking uh, about The Bachelorette, yeah. but Love Island. Um, that's not Love Island. That's Lust Island. <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> that is. Let's see. All a lot of. Are you the one? That is definitely Lust Island. Um, I like the concept of Love Is Blind. Um, because it does take away, the best that it can, it does take away that whole, um, um, that lust factor first. Yeah. First. I, don't, I don't even know. I don't, I don't watch cable or any of that stuff, so I don't even, like, I only know about it through, like, hearing other people, like, talk about it and everything like that, personally. Yeah, you're not missing anything, Dylan. You're not missing anything, I'm telling you. You're not missing anything. Yeah, I didn't think so, but you never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not a bad show. Honestly, I love it. I love the concept. I love what it actually can teach people and does teach people. And it just gives us a reminder that in this very swipe left, swipe right, you know, kind of culture that we're in right now, um, a show like Love is Blind reminds us that, you know, yes, the person can be so fine on the outside, are they fine on the inside? Like, that's also important. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't, they shouldn't have to look like Nick Jonas for them to be worthy of love, you know? Um, yeah, and it's like, well, it makes it tough too, but you're absolutely, like, because you're 100% right. It's like, this seems like the world that a lot of people live in is very superficial. Superficial. And so, like, a lot of those qualities and a lot of those people that, are true and pure like really do get kind of shunned and like not shunned but like put to the side just because like because again you could have two of the same people and like one person they just look absolutely what people call is beautiful and everything like that and maybe they have like you know amazing like a uh, like a terrible heart and everything like that or like terrible qualities and everything but that person over there who doesn't look what you would call is beautiful is one of the most genuine people that you will ever meet but that person will never get recognized that person will never get known and that person will never get the spotlight just because of how the world uh how not all the world because 
but how some people view um, what like yeah. who deserves the spotlight, who doesn't deserve the spotlight. And, mm-hmm. but, yeah, I don't That's know. Something that I talked about in my bonus episode a little bit um, is I said it in this statement: in my higher powers, Holy Spirit, God, Jesus, the Spirit guides, um, yeah. the Council, all of them who are fire. They, you know, downloaded in my mind. I just gotta let them know. It's like you are fired. But um, I downloaded. They downloaded stuff in my mind, um, and that's how that's how I was able to write a poetry book because them. You know, I was like, I don't just think of these things. They like, like oh, yeah, wow. yeah. And so basically, um, what it told me, what they said, um, and obviously I was able to translate it through my own lens was that society wants my body but my heart is what they need so um it's just like that's good I like yeah that. someone wants your body but it's just like you know my heart is really what you need my, my body is only going to give you temporary satisfaction when like my heart can like really like love you you know things like that yeah um, yeah because holy spirit knows they all they all know that, like, I, I definitely um, have, have, have closed myself off for, for, for many, 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 many years because I'm, like, was only viewed as an object, mm-hmm. you know? And so, yeah, and so, and though I didn't grow up with the best confidence, I love myself now. I have, I have confidence now, no doubt about it. But growing up, you know, I... I always was told I was ugly, I um, even thought I was ugly, you know, um, though certain individuals still viewed me as objects, you know, and so when I am viewed as an object, when a guy just wants to, like, you know, sleep with me, you know, I used to be flattered, you know, I'd be like, no, but thank you, and I genuinely meant that thank you, you know what I mean, I was like, oh, wow, it's just another, um, way of them speaking to my insecurity, letting me know that guess what, I'm, I'm, I'm at least not ugly enough for them to want me as something. And then as I grew my healing journey and my self-love journey and my love for others, you know, I began to realize I don't want to encounter that consistently anymore. I'm just like, honestly, like, have a guy come and talk about my heart Yes, like talk about my heart, that'll make me smile. Talk about my looks, I'm like, thanks, you know, like, thanks. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, and it's just like, it's not a bad thing to talk about someone's looks. It's just, what I'm saying is, I consistently had my looks talked about with other motives. They weren't just saying it as, oh, a compliment. Like when I complimented you, Dylan, they yeah. weren't just saying it as a compliment. They were saying it with an alternative motive. And it's just like, when you consistently experience something over and over and over again, you get tired of it, or you're just gonna see that that's all that there is. Because it's not like you have been shown something other than. Yeah, um, right. And then your guard gets put up and then you don't wanna put yourself out there for other people because you think they're all trying to deal with you. And everything I'm got right is that kind of like what you're experiencing, like what you've experienced, and everything like that is just like. But then those people that do, like, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, is like those people that do, that you deal with, like those guys that you're dealing with, and everything like that, who are like, uh, like seeking the surface or seeking the flesh and everything like that. It's like they're probably not ready for, uh, you know, they're not, they haven't, like learned to cultivate those things in themselves and that maybe they're craving the things that they're missing in themselves and they so they think that the body is like what's going to help them yeah. um, now you know uh, well or it's just a quick fix you know what i mean like it, it doesn't even have to be that complex or anything like that but if you want to make it like that complex it could be it's like okay you're just because yeah. that is a reality yeah. yeah yeah uh but yeah no i mean i I don't know. I've been on both sides of the spectrum. With I was like, just about to say I've been on both sides too. So I, I wanted to let people know. Hey, guess what? I I'm not judging. I'm just tired of experiencing it. 
That's all I'm saying. I'm yeah. Just it was just like, oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's like all that. I'm saying. It was. It used to be flattering. I used to love it. I'm just like, oh my god, no, but thank you. And now I'm just like, that's all I experience. Like, it's like now I want more. I know what I want. I want substance. I don't want surface level. I just, I, I can't thrive on surface level. I'm an INFJ personality type. We yeah. don't thrive on surface level. Sure. Yeah, no, exactly. And like, but again, like I'm guessing you're, you're probably not a saint, you know, like you've probably been on both sides of the spectrum of like seeking out the flash. Wait, your video is paused. Oh. It's okay. It's a good shot though. Thanks. It's, well, it's, it's, it's a funny. good shot. We got the muscles going and all that good stuff, the, the side profile, everything's, you're good. Well, I don't know. You can hear my voice, so it's fine. So anyway, exactly, so, exactly. but yeah, so I was just saying like you, like it's like you've probably been on both sides of it. Like the person seeking someone for their, you know, body, but then you've probably been on the other side of it where like you're at a point now where it's like, obviously you, you know, that's not long lasting. It doesn't really do anything long term. And deep down, maybe there's probably a lot of us that want something long lasting. I'm guessing unless that's really just, you just don't, don't, but personally, like, there's, there's a strong part of me that definitely does want something more serious with the date. Like, you know, I've been, I haven't been with a lot of different girls, but the, you know, the women that I have been with and everything like that have been like, uh, like, I've, like, I've wanted something. Like, they've been, like, I've been with them. I was never really with, like, a bunch of different people at once. I would find someone. I'd be them with them for a little bit, but I wouldn't necessarily call it dating. It was just like, okay, obviously I want this, but I'm not, I was not always ready for it. And so right, 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 right. the funny part about that is like, now it's like, I that's, I like, that would be great, but I'm so focused on growing, still growing myself and my foundation and my business and my, um, all the aspects of my like financial, spiritual, mental, emotional health, and really solidifying that and like laying the like strong bricks down that I just am like kind of pushing it away and everything, even though I could probably have it right now if I wanted to, I'm just like, I want to make sure that I'm like good and everything. And I am yeah, priorities. Lot better, lot better, you know, so. Yes, yes. Do you want to know something interesting, something that my higher powers taught me? They, they told me they were like, would you date you? And I remember, cause I was wanting all these great things. That's a good question. <laughs> Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember, and this is like, I think when I was like 19 or something like that, or 20, I was wanting all these great things in a guy, you know, and my higher powers, at that time, my higher powers to uh, Jesus, he was like, um, him and Holy Spirit, they were like, um, would you date you? Would, would you date you? Do you have those qualities that you also want from someone else? And I have to be honest, and I said no. You know, now I say yes, yes in capital letters. Um, yeah, I say yes, yes in capital letters. And you know, I'm glad others do see it. You know, now I, so I am learning to, my, my judgmentalness is starting to decrease um, towards men who just like saw me as one thing. Um, because I'm now also being shown another side of the coin of like, hey, I like your looks and your heart. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm honestly, I'm just not upset at the fact that I'm only like, for so long it's just viewed as an object. It was more so I just got upset at constantly encountering that, that I felt like that that was all that I am. Because of the sexual abuse I already been through when I was little, you know, fucking objects. So I was just like, it would trigger that. But once I was healed and healing that area, you know, um, outlook started to change. And then I just got fed up with, this is all I'm encountering though. Like, it's making me go back to that thought process that once again, I'm just an object because that's how I was always treated, mm -hmm. you know, by men. Like, as a kid, just men. Right. All, all, yeah. So, grew up hating men, but I was still attracted to them. Toxic. But, um... Toxic. <laughs> yes. 
No, hey, I appreciate the honesty and everything like that, but it's, it's not even like toxic, but well, that's funny. You're funny. Oh, no, I'm, I'm finished because I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you like, you, you busy doing boss bitch shit. No, I was, t I mean, yeah, I, there's not really, I don't really have much else to kind of like say right now, at least. I mean, we covered so much stuff and I don't really, yeah, I mean, this was, this was very insightful and it was very, I think this could potentially help a lot of people. And that was like my intention with talking to you is like, you know, I'm hoping that if this does reach whoever that it does help them with whatever they're experiencing and everything but there's a lot of different topics that we could talk about and everything that we only brushed up on and all that but i feel like we covered we definitely covered a lot of ground and everything and um you know we're all dealing with our own issues and we're all dealing with our own healing process and trauma and stuff like that in different ways and everything it doesn't have to be a significant thing but we're all we're all just healing and everything for the most part and it's stuff that won't ever really truly go away, but the way that you respond and the way that you, um, you know, respond to the world in regards to a trigger that could cause it to flare up again is something I feel like is like the best way to kind of approach healing too, is just not letting, um, projecting out too much of it onto the world, even though it's ha it happens to all of us, like it does. Right. It, it literally like it happens a couple times, like a few, I say a couple times a week where like maybe a person doesn't notice it but like someone will say something or do something and like you know i'll say something but it, you know they, they might not even notice but like i notice and i'm like damn i really need to work on that and then that's how the like how my growth kind of happens and stuff like that and so if people could you know do stuff like that or at least become more conscious of their actions even when it's tough when you have a billion things going on i think that could that's a start on um, the healing journey and process. Right. So. 1,000%. Mic drop. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, since it's almost in hour and 10 minutes, that's when it's going to cut off. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and end the episode, but stay on just like a couple minutes longer and I'm talking to yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't have to be anywhere until about 4 o'clock, so I'm good. Oh, cool, cool, cool. It definitely won't take that long. But... <laughs> But, um, okay, yes. All right, folks, this has been part two of uh, Learn to Believe Time. What I'm going to do is, um, I don't have to go through the stress of naming uh, the episode. I'm just going to make it a part two. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that works. Yes, it, it's hard to name episodes sometimes because there's so many good names. And I'm like, there's only so you know much letters that can fit in a title for the podcast. Right. So I'm just like, I get all indecisive and I'm like, which one? Oh, like, which one? Which ones? You know, so. Yeah. It's an easy day to day. And I'm going to have to do oh. something. The other thing, too, I want to say is that if you stumble across this, definitely check out my my YouTube, which is UNA underscore fitness. And then my website, unafitnesswellness.com. And then same thing with my IG. It's the same thing. So, UNAFIT. Which will be in the episode description below, folks. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, bye, folks. Um, uh, I, if I'm being honest, folks, I would like to say, you know, if no one has told you today, you were loved. You know, let yourself be the first. But I'm going to be honest with y'all, I don't have the energy. I don't have any energy to say anything. So, uh, my, my battery's drained. <laughs> yeah, my battery's drained, folks. Um, Y'all know I've been here before when I had an almost attempt and the attempt in September of last year. So y'all know how it is sometimes with me that I like. I mean well, y'all know I mean well. My, one day my vibrations will be higher than the trauma that has been given in that. Yeah. So, uh, that I chose apparently. But I'm already, bye folks, deuces. Tell someone that they're worth it and that you love them.